Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Fantasy Football and welcome to my video. It is time for Game Week 6 Preview. Um, just want to say that I had a really bad game week in Game Week 5. But the, the response on that video, uh, the preview video for Game Week 5, was just incredible. The fact that a lot of people felt how I felt and... There was so much support, even though I did really badly. It was just incredible. I just want to say thank you so much. Like, this is what I love seeing about this community. This is what I love about this game. The fact that we can, you know, have the same kind of feelings when playing this game. And we will have our ups and we will have our downs. And that's pretty much what's going to happen throughout the whole season. And don't forget, there is a lot of luck. Um you know, is in this game that we we need. And yeah, I just want to say thank you so much. I, I, I think the response on that was fantastic. So I, I actually cannot wait for game week six to start. So here we go. And as you can see for game week five, I got a whopping 36 points. So it was a terrible week for me. Below the average of 52. Look at that game week rank. But I am just outside of 1 million rank. Um, so it was pretty much my worst uh, week so far. Uh, it was a massive shock to me. I literally did not expect this to happen to my team. Um, but these things can happen. Now I don't want to talk about my team too much for this game week. Because I already created a video for that. Uh, on Sunday, you can always go back and watch it. I'll put it at the end of this video. Um, but as you can see, the back line here didn't even bring me any proper points. Uh, John McGinn actually got me three um, points here. He actually played really well against West Ham. Salah with nine. Sterling with four. Didn't even bring any returns. But with Joshua King with ten points. Now this was needed. And I'm so happy that he bought me some kind of points. And yes, I did bench Pookie with 12 points. And yeah, I did a massive mistake. And these things can happen. Uh, I just thought that Lundstrom will probably had a higher chance to get some returns. But that wasn't the case. So let's move on. Uh, let's go on to game week six. So for game week six, as you can see, this is my team setup. Now I'm going to go through my players and why I think about their fixtures. Uh, to give you guys some of my predictions. And I'm going to be talking about some of my transfers as well, as I have two free transfers for game week six. So first up, I got Ryan in goal against Newcastle. To be honest with you guys, I am not expecting any clean sheets from my goalkeeper. Um, I kind of just gave up. I'm happy the fact that I got a cheap goalkeeper instead of a premium one. Um, but I mean... Any kind of points for my goalkeeper is going to be a massive bonus for me. Uh, and do I think Brighton could keep a clean sheet against Newcastle? I think there is there is a chance. Um, but because it's a away game, I think it's going to be a little bit difficult. But we'll see. Next up is Van Dijk against Chelsea. Now Liverpool will be playing Chelsea away. And do I think Liverpool's got a chance to keep a clean sheet? I don't think they will. But I think they will beat um, Chelsea. I think with Mason Mount um, being an injury doubt, um, that's going to hurt them a lot if he doesn't play. Um, and I can see Liverpool winning this game, but I can also see them conceding. Next up is Zinchenko. Now, this player could be an issue very, very soon, or maybe even this weekend. Mendy is back. He played a little bit in the Champions League. I feel like Mendy needs just a little bit more time. I think if he plays in a like a cup game, like full 90 minutes, then there will be a massive issue for this player. Meaning that there will be some rotation. Um, he didn't perform well uh, against Norwich. Um, so that is a problem in itself. But I don't think I'll go out there and, and and remove him just because of that. I think if you have him, I wouldn't use like a transfer to get rid of this player. 
against Watford, if he does play, I think this is a fantastic chance for um, Manchester City to actually score a lot of goals. And they have to play. They have to play well. And they need to win this game. Luka Dean, this is a fantastic fixture for Luka Dean. Uh, 6.2, I can see him getting some returns against um, Sheffield United. Um, Everton actually plays really well at home. The only problem that I have, I still have Sigurdsson. And I'm telling you right now, he will be gone after this game. Or if I have a really good option for this week, then I will switch him over. But I think... Like, what would you do if you had the chance to keep Sigerson for this home game against Sheffield? You know, would you? In my eyes, I think I should. If I don't, then if he does score, then that's going to be painful. Uh, against Manchester City, I guess I can get rid. You know, there's a there's a, like a lower chance for him to get some returns in this game. So, for now, I still have to keep. Um, I just hope that he can bring me the points. And a lot of people are talking about teams that are, are similar to each other. I mean, i got players in here that is less than 10% owned. So, I mean, if these players does well, then my whole team is going to do well. Now, the problem here is Sterling. On my, on my Twitter account, I tweeted that I'm planning to maybe switch him to Sergio Aguero. As you all know... A girl was benched in the Champions League game. Um, Sterling played, what, full 90 minutes? So, a lot of people are thinking about, is Sterling going to be benched for the Watford game? I don't think he will. But, he might come off early. I mean, but then I start thinking to myself, hang on. They need to win this game against Watford. They need to have their best players on. And this is their chance to kind of catch up. And I don't think he's going to be benched. But I think having... if you, I think if you have Sergio Aguero, I think... I'll, if I had him, I, I would captain him. That's just my... That's just what I would do. And it's been a little bit painful for Serling to not to bring any new points. And that's kind of a factor as well. Um, yeah, it's, it's a massive decision. I'm not saying get this, get that. I'm just talking out loud so people can hear. I don't know. Maybe we can have a discussion. Um, but we'll, we'll talk about some transfers in a sec. So here's my captain for now. Um, Salah, uh, a chance for him to do well here because Chelsea's got a weak defence. Um, so I'm not, I don't think he can score like three or four goals. I think he will get some kind of return still. Kevin De Bruyne, um, I think when the third goal went in, it just came off after like, uh, I think it was around 70 minutes or something like that uh, in that Champions League game. So this means that they really want to rest him up to be fit for the Premier League. So this is a, a high, high chance for um, uh, Kevin De Bruyne to play, obviously, against uh, Watford. And i got John McGinn. Um, he actually played really well against West Ham. Um and against Arsenal, now we know that Arsenal's got a leaky uh, defense, so I think I think I'm gonna play him. Um, yes, it's a difficult game, but I think um, I think it's gonna be a great game. And plus, very good fixtures for John McGinn, a cheap player um, to have in our team. So I'm actually I'm actually happy with having him in my team. To be honest with you, uh, we got Puki against Burnley. Um, you know, we just got to play him forever now. I think he's like a must-owned player. Uh, still 7.1, still cheap to get. And I'm going to have Josh Kinn. Um, I don't think there is a, a massive reason for me to remove him. Um, a great fixture here against West Ham in game week 7. And if Callum Wilson just continues to score, then he will probably... Um, get some points in return because of the assist. Plus, he's on penalties. Um, so, yeah, I'm really happy. Lundstrom here, just in case that there is any issues with my defense. Let's just say that Zinchenko is out and he's on bench or something and he doesn't play. Then I have Lundstrom here. Uh, let's just say, like, I don't know. Let's just say Sterling is benched or he, he, he's not uh, in the squad. Then I have Greenwood or Lundstrom to help me out. 
So that's pretty much my team for game week six. Now, as for the transfers, uh, this is where it becomes very, very interesting. Hear me out. Just, just, just hear me out before you go crazy. Um, and for those people are watching and following, um, just do what's best for your team. Okay, that's all I can say. This is what I'm thinking. Because I got two free transfers, I'm thinking to remove Sterling. Thinking to remove Greenwood and bringing in a player like Sergio Aguero and captaining him against Watford. And then for my midfield, I just need a 4.5. I'm not going to go out there and try and get in Cantwell um, and take a minus 4. I don't think that's... I don't think that's a good move anyway. Yes, I can still bring Cantwell later on. Uh, I think that he's probably the best option. But someone like Hayden, just, just someone that actually plays and but will be on my bench forever. <laughs> and and if this this and if it and if I go for this um transfer, as you can see, I've got zero uh, million in the bank. I use both of my transfers, I'll be taking no hits. And I'll be moving from that 3-5-2 formation to 3-4-3 three, three formation. As you all know, there's a lot of strikers right now to actually get. Now, going three up front maybe is the way to go from now on. Um, as you all know, we all got these cheap strikers that are performing. There's a lot of them right now. And they are very cheap. They are very cheap. They're going to give us a lot of value in our team. I think I think that's probably the way to move forward right now. So the other transfers is keeping Sterling, but bringing in Cantwell, which is 4.9 for Sigurdsson, and removing Greenwood for Abraham. Now, a difficult fixture here against uh, Liverpool in game week six, but after that, if he actually gets any kind of returns in this game, oh my god, these fixtures are incredible. So this is the other transfers I was thinking about. So if I don't want to go for Sergio Aguero, I think, I mean, I think this is really good. I have a fantastic team. I have a good bench players as well that could help me out in the long run. And as you can see, I will use two, three of my transfers. And I think this is a, another good kind of transfers. But hang on. There is one more transfer plan. Now hear me out. What about this? Removing King. Removing Sterling. By bringing in Cantwell. And then getting Sergio Aguero and captaining him in game week 6. But then, as you can see, I've got 1.4 in the bank. I'll use two free transfers for game week six. But then in game week seven, I can remove Sigurdsson, who's got a game against Manchester City at home. I can remove him, and I could bring in a player like Song. We know what he can do. He was actually rested in the Champions League game. As you can see, Southampton at home is a fantastic fixture for him to get a lot of points. A lot of people are thinking about getting Song into their team. And this will mean that I will have 0 0.5 in the bank. That means for game week 7, I will take a minus 4 point hit. I remove a player like Zinchenko or Lukitin, one of those players. Let's just say I remove Zinchenko, right? We're hearing that Manley's back. I can go and get myself another Spurs player, which is Aurier, which is 4.9. I think that plan is fantastic, but there are some issues. Well, there could be some issues. There might be other injured players in my team. Um, prices might rise and I might need to make some early transfers and that could cause the issue here and there but i really like that this is a way to get song without removing big players like salah de bruyne aguero 
uh, and still having a really balanced team or a, a decent team still have like a bench players that could help me around. So those were my thoughts. Those were what I was thinking about. Um, and yeah, I still need to think about it. Um, I think tomorrow will be the... Yeah, I'm going to wait until the deadline and make some kind of transfer. Um, I have to make some kind of transfer anyway. I don't want to burn one transfer uh, just because I got two free. I could adjust my defense. But any kind of news that I find out, then I will be making some kind of uh, transfers to adapt. But I really like the Aguero um, option going free up front and maybe later on removing Joshua King. Uh, just let me know in the comments below what you think. Which um, transfer plan that I have mentioned is fantastic. Which one would you go for? Or which one are you going with? What are you going to be doing for game week 6 or game week 7? What are your plans? Let me know in the comments below. Let other people know. Help each other out. And that is about it. I hope... You guys have enjoyed that. I hope you have a fantastic, fantastic game week. Do not forget the deadline is on Friday. Um, so yeah, don't forget about that. And I will post all my transfers on my Twitter account. So follow me on that. I'll put it in the comments below. And that is about it. Thank you so much, guys. And I'll see you guys next time. See ya.